follow the science, said no scientist ever. <laughs> right? Science, science is not okay. science is not the endeavor that lays out an ethical pathway. That's not what it is. And so it's the same is ought problem. Just because there's a set of facts on the ground doesn't mean that that outlines an unerring path forward. And what the politicians did was they artificially, because they were cowardly and because they relied on opinion polls, and I know this for a fact, and so this is what happened in Canada, they used opinion polls and then post hoc justified their compliance with the opinion polls by forcing what was a false scientific consensus on people. And they did that consciously, knowing full well they were doing it. And they did that whether they were socialist or centrist or conservative. And it was utterly appalling. So no more this follow the science nonsense. Science is an enterprise that attempts to falsify itself constantly. Right? Science always assumes that what it's putting forward in some sense is insufficient and incorrect. And then also, there's the problem of the plethora of facts. And so one of the things that concerned me during the COVID lockdowns is, well, first, there was no all-cause mortality data on the COVID vaccines. And that's actually not a flaw. That's a fatal flaw. You mean you don't know if the vaccines killed more people than they saved. You actually don't know that. Well, no, we don't know that because we didn't have time to do the studies. Okay, that means you don't know it. And things go wrong badly. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you might, but there's been a substantial spike in all-cause mortality in Europe in the last five months. Like in Spain, it's 36% above normal. Why? Well, there's two possible reasons, and I don't know which of these is true, and there might be other reasons. One is the vaccines are killing people. Now, I doubt that, but it's possible. Okay, now, the more likely cause, I believe, is that because we prioritized COVID lockdown above all else, we stopped people from receiving necessary medical care on all sorts of fronts, and we stressed them three quarters to death. And so now, a bunch of them are dying. And my suspicions are, if we did the all-cause mortality analysis with any degree of, of uh, propriety, we'd find that the whole lockdown process I suspect it'll kill 100 people for everyone it's saved. That's my guess. Now, that's a guess. And that would include the long-term consequences of supply chain disruptions, which are likely to cause people to starve. And also the potential exacerbation of the conflict with Russia, because one of the things I've wondered about is, well, did we not go and talk to Putin for like two years? Face to face? No, you, you were talking earlier, Ambassador, about the preconditions that are necessary to make peace with fractious countries. It's like, how about go and talk to somebody? Like, face to face, right? Not in an email, not by text, and not abstracted on Zoom, but so you can go out for dinner and have a drink and see that you're both human beings, despite your differences. We have no idea how important that is. And so, no all-cause mortality data. That's a big problem. And then the fact that the left climbed in bed with the pharmaceutical companies, that was utterly shocking to me. I thought, if you would have polled leftists 10 years ago and you said, okay, who are your enemies? Well, capitalists, clearly. Okay, which capitalists? Oil companies. All right, number one, oil companies. Number two, pharmaceutical companies, for sure. But now they're your best friend, all of a sudden. Well, why is that? Well, could it be because they offer the possibility of centralized power and control? Because it was the only thing I could see. It's like, why are pharmaceutical companies all of a sudden your friend? Okay, and so I'll close, I'll close with this. I'll close with this. Policy based on compulsion is self-destructive policy. Period. Now, you, you might have to... You have to make an exception, perhaps, for criminals. But that's also perhaps because we're not sophisticated enough to know, to know what to do with outright criminals that doesn't require compulsion. But as a good rule of thumb, if your damn policy, if your problem, if your solution to the problem is other people have to do what you're telling them to or else, then maybe you're a tyrant and not a proper leader. Yeah.